Hello, friends in Christ. Time for midday Thursday prayers. Psalm 39 now. Uh, the heading gives us that it's for a, a man who must be maybe a musician in the temple courts. But the content of the psalm is a real wrestle. It sounds to me, maybe you, you'll have your own opinion, that David is consumed with the thought of dying and the shortness of life. I think there's two things especially for us to pick up. David says his hope is in the Lord yet. You'll hear that in here. Can you and I say that when we have thoughts of dying? Absolutely. That's our ultimate hope. The Lord who lived and died and rose again to take away the fear of death for us. It doesn't mean there won't be anything we're ever afraid of. It means that there's nothing that can actually hurt us in that. Um, the, the thing then that David wants to consider is he's thinking about uh, always the enemies before him, right? Is uh, the forgiveness. Save me from my transgressions, Lord, and set me free. I think we hear a note of asking the Lord to prolong his life Whatever the circumstance was, maybe David was staring death in the face. Uh, Lord, let me live so I can do your work here. In any case, it's a psalm that reminds us of how powerful the fear of death is, but not just that, also the joy of seeing both the shortness of life and then embracing it in the Lord, but also considering the joy of the long-lasting eternity that's ours in the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 39. I said, I will guard my ways so that I may not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle so long as the wicked are in my presence. I was mute and silent. I held my peace to no avail and my distress grew worse. My heart became hot within me. As I mused, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. O Lord, Make me know my end, and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few hand breaths, and my lifetime is as nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as a mere breath. Surely a man goes about as a shadow. Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. Man heaps up wealth and does not know who will gather. And now, O oh Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. I am mute. I do not open my mouth, for it is you who have done it. Remove your stroke from me. I am spent by the hostility of your hand. When you discipline a man with rebukes for sin, you consume like a moth what is dear to him. Surely all mankind is a mere breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am a sojourner with you, a guest like all my fathers. Look away from me, that I may smile again before I depart and am no more. Do you hear echoes of the Lord Jesus? A man who carried our sorrows and our sins had the face of his father against him, a man who was silent, and a man who faced death so that there wouldn't have to be fear of death for us anymore. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are for us. Let's pray. Almighty God, who lives forever but has set bounds to our lives on this earth that we can't pass, grant us true wisdom that we set not our hearts on earthly things or follow after mammon, but that we seek first your kingdom and the righteousness of your Son. By the work of your Holy Spirit, teach us to remember that we are but pilgrims on this earth, strangers here, and help us to fix our hearts and hopes above, where Christ is, sitting on your throne. Amen. Well, we've been thinking about the beautiful gifts this week, uh, fruits of the Spirit. Remember, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, Galatians chapter five. 
Uh, so we've talked about love and joy, and today we come to peace. Among the various fruits of the Spirit, which Paul mentions, the third is peace. Let us mark well. He does not say that our peace is the fruit of our circumstances. We are all tempted to look at our circumstances and to find in them the reason for peace of mind. Our children are well, our finances are sound, our friends are kind, and so we are at peace. But when things suddenly change, we discover to our dismay that our peace was drawn from our circumstances and not from the Lord of our circumstances. Such a peace is not the fruit of the Spirit, it is the fruit of our environment, and our environment changes like the weather. The Bible tells us, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, Isaiah 26. So, in other words, the Lord will keep peace for those whose minds rest in him. Those who have experienced the love of God in Christ have learned to throw their entire weight on God trusting that underneath are the everlasting arms. Into his hands they commit all of their yesterdays, knowing that for Jesus' sake he will forgive them. Into his hands they commit today, knowing that it is another day of grace. And into his hands they commit their tomorrows, knowing that all of his mercies, which have been new to us every morning, will be just as new, just as sure, and just as all-sufficient tomorrow as they are today. That's the peace and assurance which is the fruit of the Spirit. How about the peace you and I enjoy today? Is it merely the result of comfortable circumstances or is it the peace that has its roots in the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Savior? Bane and blessing, pain and pleasure, by the cross are sanctified. Peace is there that knows no measure, joys that through all time abide. Let's pray. God of peace, we turn aside today from an unquiet world, seeking rest for our spirit and light for our thoughts. We bring to you our work to be sanctified, our wounds to be healed, our sins to be forgiven, our hopes to be renewed. In you there is perfect harmony. Draw us to yourself and to your peace and silence the discords in our lives. Your greatness is beyond our highest praise Take us out of the loneliness of self and fill us, fill us with the fullness of your peace. Grant our hearts to know that we are forgiven for all of the sins of yesterday and all of our past completely. You're not holding those against us. Set us free not to dwell on them ourselves. Give us joy in today and hear us give you thanks that you have brought us to this day and that you have blessed us in this day. Keep our eyes open to the gifts and the opportunities that you put before us today. And we praise you and thank you that you will be with us tomorrow and as many tomorrows as you give us here until you bring us home where we really belong, where we will be at perfect peace forever. Today, especially, we ask you, Lord, to be near with your Holy Spirit and your healing hand and your holy angels our sister Cheryl Mitchell, as she undergoes uh, foot surgery. Please grant this surgery success. Keep her safe in your care. Um, and we pray, uh, draw her even closer to you. We ask also for your caring hand on Joyce Littlefield's friend, Dave, as he goes through the complications that have followed heart surgery. Please be his strength and stay as well, and according to your will, give him healing and recovery. We place these people into your hands and ask you to remember us in your kingdom as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of all peace give you his peace at all times and in every way. See you tomorrow.